Hello, my name is Shane Yates, and today I am going to be performing a poem called Blue Ridge. Um, this poem is by Ellen Bryant Voigit, um, and she is she's greatly influenced by music, and before she writes, she usually listens to the sounds first, um, and most of her poems are related to motherhood, the real South, and family and music. So that was just like a little bit about her writing style, and now I am going to just um, dive into the poem. Up there on the mountain road, the fireworks blistered and subsided. For once at eye level, splattered of light like water flickered from the fingers. The brief emergent pattern and, af and after the after image bled from the night sky a delayed and muffled thud that must have seemed enormous down below. The sound concomitant with the arranged threat of fire above the bleachers stood as tall and straight as possible, trying to compensate, trying not to lean in my friend's direction. Besides me, correcting height, he slouched, his shoulders, knees locked, one leg stuck up to form a defensive angle from the other. Thus, we were not approximate and must removed, and most removed. In the long pauses between explosions, he'd signal to conversations by nodding vaguely toward the ragged pines. I said my children would have loved the show. He said we were watching youth at great, great distance, and I thought how the young are truly boring, unvaried, as there, by the deep scar of doubt, the constant afterimage of regret, no major tension in their bodies, no tender hesitation. They don't know yet that this is so much work, scraping from the self, its multiple desires, don't know yet fatigue with self, the hunger for obliteration that wakes us in the night at the dead hour and fuels good sex. Of course, I didn't say it. I realized he watched the fireworks with the cool attention he had turned on woman dancing in the bar, blunt, uninvested gaze, calibrating every moving part, thighs, breasts, the muscles of abdomen. abdomen. I had wanted that gaze on me. And as the evening dwindled to its nub, its bundle of tallow, appetite without object, as the men peeled off to seek the least in encumbered consolation with the women grew expansive with regard. How have I managed to long to stand among the paired bodies, the raw pulsing music driving loneliness into the air like scent and not be seized by longing and not give anything to be summoned into the larger soul two souls can make watching the fireworks with my friend so little ease so little ease between us i see that i have armed myself fire changes everything it touches perhaps he has foreseen this impe impe impediment perhaps when he holds himself within himself a sheer angular figure at my shoulder he means to be protective less of him than me keeping his complicating rage inside his body and what would it solve if he took one hand from his pocket risking touch risking invitation if he took my hand it would not alter this explicit sadness the evening stalls the fireworks grow boring at this remove the traffic prowling the highways at our backs the couples the families scuffling on the bank must think of strangers to each other or, more likely, with the celebrated fireworks thrusting their brilliant repeating designs over the ridge, we simply, we simply blur into the foreground like the fireflies dragging among the trees, their separate discontinuous lan lanterns. Okay, uh, that, was the, um, that was the full poem, and um, now getting into my defense. Um, this, uh, the narrator of this poem is a woman who either might be separated or widowed from her, like, lifelong partner. We're not sure, but we know that she does. She was, um, involved with another man because in the poem it does say that her kids would love, she said she, her kids would love this, um, show. Um, and she's on a date with another man who we understand that she is not happy because of her word choices she's trying not to lean into him she's just like not like feeling this spark between them and something we can take away from this poem that we can learn from being human is that we create we crave this powerful these powerful relationships and connections with other people and we want like we want them to almost like create a spark in ourselves 
Um, but sometimes this doesn't happen. And I also get, like, from this poem, I, I feel as if she's, like, grieving the absence of her lost partner, which is something we can also learn as humans, that with the loss of someone also comes the emotions with losing that person. And one of the biggest emotions is grief. And throughout the poem, she is, it sounds like she is just not content with who she is with because she's obviously grieving this other other man in her life um two performance decisions that I made um kind of to go along with um uh like the theme of the poem and like what it means to be human is I I made the tone of the narrator sound a bit sad because she isn't really feeling this connection and the grief uh she's not she's isn't really it doesn't really have this connection with this other person and the grief of not being with the father or kids might be taking over um so and then another performance choice I made was to have a concern and um like a melancholy look to me when performing I did this so the audience would question and think what's wrong like why is she presenting these emotions um I got this from the article I think it was the uh theories of performance um let me just double check um yeah uh, it's the performing um social roles sorry um it's by bell and um sorry i didn't have the whole thing written out right there but um it's by bell and the um, barrier of bad news is communication is communicated in two ways the expressions she gives and the expression she gives off i wanted the audience to feel the dis um the disconnection between her and the date she was with and not she, like as if she wasn't really there she was just just existing um but yeah so that was my performance of um blue ridge and thank you